Okay, so I just wanted to go through for the skills check and talk about the different levels of alertness, um, attention, command following, and vigilance testing. Um, so kind of going through different kinds of alertness. Um, the first level, we have five different kinds, and the first level of alertness is being alert. So this is kind of what everyone is kind of walking around. Um, you kind of need this to be able to learn. Um, then you have, you go into lethargy or being lethargic. Um, and that's kind of the same thing. You can still learn in this, in this level of alertness, but um, you're very tired in a sense. Um, and then you kind of go into what's called uptunded, where you kind of need some kind of external force to stay awake or you're going to fall asleep. So things like just kind of nudging your shoulder um, to keep you awake would work. Um, these patients may need you to repeat some of the instructions every once in a while. Um, that's only because they're not in that like alert stage to actually get the instructions right away to, to learn what you're teaching them. Um, and then you go into stupor, which is a little bit more tired than that to where like if you don't have someone pushing you all the time to say, wake up, wake up, um, you're, you're going to fall back asleep. Um, so these patients are fairly tired. Um, it's really hard to keep them awake and keep them engaged in what you're doing because that attention is just, it's just kind of not there at the moment. Um, and then the last level is, is coma. So that's pretty much where you have patients that are just unresponsive. Um, no amount of stimulus that you give them is going to like arouse them and get them awake. Um, and they're just kind of unable to keep their eyes open and participate in what you're doing. Um, and you need the alert level to be able to have their attention there for them to learn. Um, so I can kind of go through the different kinds of attention. You have your selective attention, which is where you focus on one thing um, and you work on that one thing. And then you go into divided attention, which is kind of your multitasking. So that's kind of like at the moment I'm sitting on a yoga ball while I'm recording this. So a little bit of um, divided attention to keep my balance and keep talking and remember what I'm going to say. Um, but then you can go into like sustained attention, which is kind of plays into selective a little bit, but sustained is where you're just kind of keeping, um, your attention on, on one task for a, a, an extended period of time. Um, so like I think the example in class was like participating in class and like being in lecture for that extended two, two hours, I think. Um, and then you have your, um, your switching attention which is where you kind of go from one task to another and you don't really stop. So that was um, maybe you're writing something down and then you go pick up a book and you read that for a little while, then you have a phone call. So you kind of switch to your phone, then back to your book, then kind of keep going in that way. Um, so one thing that we can do to test some of those um, types of attention are like vigilance testing. And I wish I had it printed out. Um, but it's to test like selective and sustained attention. So it's a sheet of letters. And as a PT, I would call out these numbers. But not, I would call out the letters and they'd be kind of in a random order, but I would keep the same tone throughout the whole time and just tell the patient when you hear um, an A, tap your hand on the bed. And so I would go through and just like J, K, L, B, A, and then they'd hit their hand um, whenever they heard an A. Um, and that's just to test like how, um, how their selective memory is focusing on one task and one task only. Um, the good thing about that test is that it's pretty, pretty good for patients that can't communicate in any way. So if they have trouble speaking or maybe if there's a little bit of a language barrier um, where they know like the letters, um, it's good to test for patients like that. Um, but there's also, we can test with their memory. So like short-term and long-term memory that can help um, kind of see where their attention's at with us when we're gonna work with them. So like things like short-term memory, um, doing, a, doing a three word recall. So when you walk in telling them like, hey, I'm gonna say three words to you, um, I don't know what's around me at the moment, but uh, skull, bottle, bag, 
whatever. Um, whichever three words you can think of that are easy to remember. Um, and then have the patient repeat those back to you so that, that you know that they heard them. There's no miscommunication with that. Um, and then wait and have them do something else for about a minute or two. Have them talk about themselves, ask them questions, um, and then come back and ask them, what were those three words I told you a few minutes ago? And see if they can remember that short-term memory of what were those words. Um, and then for long-term memory, just to see, um, you can ask them questions maybe about um, where they grew up, any kind of like historical event, um, anything that was not within the last few minutes, something that's previous in their life, like five to 10 years old. Um, so there's no overlap between which type of memory is it. Um, and that can just kind of help to know that when we're working with them, how, how easy is it for them to remember the instructions that we're giving them? Because, you know, we, we're going to give them these commands, like command following, and I'll go into it in a second. Um, so just to know how we can adapt to help them better. Um, so with like command following, you have different kinds of steps with that. So you have like single, double, and multi command following steps. So it's like a single step would just be asking a patient like, oh, can you, can you grab my fingers? Or like, can you raise your arm? And it's just one thing at a time that they can follow. And then you can kind of see how they do with multiples. So like doing a double, like, can you raise your arm and give me a high five or something like that. Um, and then you can kind of progress into doing like a multi-level. So like, can you raise your arm, give me a high five, give me a fist bump, do the whole chain of different kind of handshakes, you know? Um, just so we know how, how to give them instructions. Because if we're working with them and we give them this multi-step command task and their level's only in a single, it's not really gonna be as helpful to them. And they might struggle with that. Um, so yeah, thank you.